Hello, everyone. This is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We're in Joshua chapter 4, verse 7, James chapter 2, verse 12, and Matthew chapter 7, verse 29. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you, Father God, for this word. Thank you for helping us to remember where you have brought us from. God, help us to walk in authority. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys. Um, the first one is Joshua chapter four, verse seven. Then you shall tend, then you shall tell them that the waters of the Jordan were cut off before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. When it passed over the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. So these stones shall be to the people of Israel a memorial forever. All right. And so this is just speaking of the mighty acts of God, the miracles that God has um, performed for the children of Israel and just remembering them. So you don't fall away from a living God, right? This is the living God. This is the true and living God. He has performed mighty acts. They have seen them with their eyes and therefore they should attest to them, to the people who have not seen with their eyes. And so they were to build this altar after they came out of the Jordan from the stones that were in the water. And so they, they were to build up this altar and then if the children were to ask, what are these stones for? Why are these stones here? They are to tell them about um, the fact that God had um, parted the Jordan uh, for them to cross over. Remember, he parted the Red Sea and he parted the Jordan. So God was miraculous in his, his show and his demonstration of his great power and great ability. So we need to be remembering and walking in the fact that God is a powerful God and what he has done for us in the past. Don't forget the miracles that he has done for you and your family. Don't forget the, the peace that he's brought to your home, to your children, to your life, right? Because God is an amazing God. He is, he is worthy to be remembered and reflected upon. Amen. All right. And so the second verse that the Lord gave me was James chapter two, verse 12. So speak and so act as those who are to be judged under the law of liberty. So we are not to walk in judgment of others, right? We're supposed to be walking in great mercy, not in judgment. God wants us to realize that, okay, if we call ourselves believers on Christ and what he has done for us and, and believing in the fact that he has atoned for our sins, then we need to be walking that out. And remember, faith without works is dead. Faith without works is is nothing, right? We it, it is a dead kind of faith. God wants us to display our faith in our actions. And one of those actions is to not be, um, not feel confined by um, the word of God, right? The word of God is freeing. It gives liberty. And so it says, so speak and so act as those who are to be judged under the law of liberty. All right. And so um, when you look at this verse, James 2.12, it's almost like a conundrum. Like it, it whenever I see the word um, law, and then, and then I see the word liberty, I feel like they're opposing each other, right? Because when you think of the law, you think of many rules, confining, restricting, you know, bondage, right? When you think of liberty, you think of freedom, um, movement, you think of just flowing, right? And, and God wants us to realize that we do have a law and it is the law of following by the spirit, which is free. We're following by um, uh, the Lordship of Christ, right? It's not just about getting your free ticket and walking away. Our law that we live by is freedom, right? And, and that freedom comes through Christ Jesus and Holy Spirit. We freely walk, we flow, knowing that great mercy will be shown to those who have had great mercy. And so that's how we live. That's how we want our being to be. 
We don't want to walk in restriction. We don't want to walk in judgment of others. We want to j- walk in the freedom that comes in Christ Jesus and, and not in, in the laws that are binding, right? That are restricting, that are judging one another, that are not walking by faith, but just walking, just, just having a, a bit of faith to believe, grab your ticket, your eternal life ticket and walk away. That's a dead faith, right? That is not a faith that is alive. And that is not a faith that is free. That is still walking in the bondage of sin. You have not been immersed in the same way. Like you are baptized. Baptism is a is an outward sign of an internal change. That means that you are immersed. You are being um, submerged into something and your whole being is made new, right? You're coming, you're leaving that old dead way behind and you're being risen into something that is new, alive, free. You've been given eternal life, right? And that comes from Christ and through his Holy Spirit. And so um, God is wanting us to remember that, remember where we come from, remember where God has brought us from in this great um, bondage of sin and death, right? Because remember, the law just was showing us where we were going wrong and we were going wrong all over the place, right? And we need to remember that. We need to remember what God has set us free from, the miracle of his death and how it affects us eternally um, when we accept it and we begin to walk in his ways, right? All right. And so the third verse that the Lord gave me was Matthew chapter seven, verse 29, where he was teaching them as one who had authority, not as their scribes. So it's basically a contrast of the spirit versus the law, right? Because if you have Christ, um, Christ was teaching the people um, as if he had authority over the word, right? He had, he was the Lord of the Sabbath, right? So he is the one from which the law comes. And so when he taught them, he didn't teach them as if he was teaching them something that was written down that he knew it was, it was him, right? He was teaching from himself as one who had authority, right? So, um, a scribe is a person who knows the word, right? Not necessarily is doing the word, is a person who is an expert in knowing the order of the law and knowing knowing the application of those things. They're almost like lawyers, um, but for the church, for the temple. Um, they they know the law, they know um they know how to enact contracts. They know things that are in opposition um, to what the law states. Um, they know in the same way a lawyer would practice um, law, right? It doesn't mean that you're living out each case. It means that you know um, and you have been trained in usage of what is in the Torah. And so um, with Christ, it's freedom, right? Because he is the law. The Christ is the word made flesh. So when he is speaking about the law, when he is speaking about um, the liberty that it brings, when he is speaking about the Jordan River and all the miraculous signs and wonders, it's because he is the law. He is the word made flesh. And, and therefore he has authority to lead us and guide us into all truth with the Holy Spirit because he knows how to navigate it because it's him, right? And so um, it says, for he was teaching them as one who had authority and not as their scribes. So God wants us to have freedom in him. He wants us to be able to bless others Right. So like, you know, what we were talking about other God uh, earlier, God wants us to um, to be used by him. But he doesn't want us to face condemnation because, say, we missed an opportunity. Right. And and we ask for forgiveness. We he doesn't want us to be in condemnation and stay there. No, because lordship says I'm going to continue in that way. It doesn't mean that I'll never fall. It doesn't mean that I'll never make a mistake. It means that I'm going to get back up and I'm going to continue letting him be my Lord and, and do my best to do better next time. Amen. 
So we have to walk and live by that. All right, you guys, let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for this word. Thank you for this completion of scriptures. We thank you for showing us the way and helping us to understand better um, the law of liberty, which frees us because we can walk by your spirit, which is freedom in you. We thank you for dying for us on the cross. We thank you for the atonement of our sins. And we thank you for the many miracles that you have performed on behalf of us and our previous generation so that we could even be here and experience this. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if there is anybody out there who would like to receive Jesus as their Savior and Lord, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. But more than anything, believe it with all your heart as you confess it with your mouth. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross and I believe you rose again on the third day so that I could be saved. Thank you, Father God, for doing this for me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, you guys, if you have prayed that prayer and you believe that prayer, then the Holy Spirit has come into you and sealed you until the day of redemption. And no one can break that seal except Christ Jesus when he comes to redeem his church. The Holy Spirit is in you to lead you and guide you into all truth. And he's going to show you the way. Amen. Um, one of the things that Christ wanted us to do and not forsake is the fellowshipping of ourselves one to another. Make sure you go out and find a church home, find other believers to be around so that you can stay sharp in the word of God, as well as go out and, and tell other people about Christ and what he's done for you in your life. And then go out and be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, you guys, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you, his children, his peace. Take care and be blessed.